Hello and welcome to the episode 118 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we have a couple of Spanish holidays, a TV special, and the start of the work on Eleanor Rigby. On the 28th of April 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, were on the stage of the Top 10 Club in Hamburg, West Germany, for their second residency in that city. One year later, in 1962, the same lineup was busy with a third residency in Hamburg, with their 15th performance at the Star Club. On this day in 1963, the Beatles started a 12-day break. George Harrison, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr flew to Santa Cruz, Tenerife. John Lennon and Beatles manager Brian Epstein, instead, flew to continental Spain. John left his wife Cynthia behind, only after three weeks from the birth of their son Julian. In the anthology book, John is quoted saying, The holiday was planned, but I wasn't going to break the holiday for a baby, and that's what a bastard I was, and went. I watched Brian picking up boys, and I liked playing a bit faggy. It's enjoyable. Throughout the years, there have been wild speculations about what happened between John and Brian Epstein during their Spanish holiday. This does include Paul McCartney stating in the anthology that he thought John had followed Brian in Spain to use the chance to impress upon him the fact that he was the leader of the Beatles, and John's close friend Pete Sutton's tale of Lennon allowing Epstein to touch him one night. Nobody will ever know for sure, and to be fair, whatever happened or did not happen is hardly our business. Let's move to the 28th of April 1964, then. The Beatles returned at the Ready Fusion's Wembley Studio 5AB at 11 am for a final rehearsal for the TV special Around the Beatles. The ITV show was going to be filmed in the evening between 9 and 10.15 pm, in front of a live audience. After the morning rehearsal, the band recorded a lengthy interview with Swedish radio's Klaus Berling. In the evening, as said, the Fabs took part in the filming of Around the Beatles, appearing in the introduction, offering a humorous spoof on Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, and specifically Act 5, Scene 1, introducing the performance of PJ Proby and offering their own mimed performance as recorded on the 19th of April. Check out episode 109 of What A Fab Day for more information on that. Apart from PJ Proby, other artists taking part of the special were the Vernon's Girls, Long John Baldry, Millie, The Jets, Scylla Black and Song Incorporated. Ready Fusion broadcast the production on the ITV network on the 6th of May between 9.45 and 10.45 pm. You can watch the introduction of the show and the Shakespeare skit following the link in the episode description. In 1965, the Beatles were at the Twickenham Film Studios, completing the unused Howard and Richard scene started on the 22nd of April as detailed in episode 112 of What A Fab Day. In the afternoon, the band completed the pub sequence shooting the indoor part of it. The exterior had been completed on the 24th of April. During the filming, Peter Sellers arrived on the set to present the Beatles with what he called a Grandma Award, a Grammy Award for the group's A Hard Day's Night, winner of the 1964 Best Performance by a Vocal Group. A video of Sellers giving the prize to the Beatles aired on the 18th of May between 8.30 and 9.30 pm Eastern Standard Time for NBC's The Best on Records. It included a curious invention. John Lennon started talking in what sounded like fake French, followed by the other Beatles, until the four and Peter Sellers put the words together, coming up with a verse from It's a Long Way to Tipperary. Moving on to 1966, we get another Paul McCartney song Work It Out in Abbey Road. 
Alan Rigby's rhythm track, featuring two string quartets, was completed in 14 takes recorded between 5 and 7.50 pm. With Paul and John in the control room, George Martin was in Studio 2, conducting Tony Gilbert, Sidney Sachs, John Sharp and Jürgen Hess on violin, Stephen Shingles and John Underwood on viola, and Derek Simpson and Norman Jones on cello. The instruments were recorded with microphones placed extremely close to the strings, obtaining an unconventional sound for both classical and pop music. This concludes the episode. If you like the work I'm doing, please head to www.simonmas.com support to find out how you can help me to put out more music-related content. No donation is too small, no shout-out is forgotten. Thank you! For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.